If you've been in the computer market recently and you came across an M4 Mac Mini, it might just be one of the best computers that you can buy brand new for music production in 2025. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. And in this one, we're gonna check out the new M4 Mac Mini that I just purchased. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the specs and what's new for this computer and see if it can handle some of the biggest dolls and the biggest tasks when it comes to music production. So before I had this computer, I had a 2019 MacBook Pro. I love the thing, it was an absolute beast, but the battery was dying and I just did not wanna sink money into putting a new battery. So I decided I would just get a new computer. Now the M4 Mac Mini that I purchased happens to be the base model. If we go ahead and check out what we have here, it comes equipped with two USB-C ports and a headphone jack on the front. And on the back you have your power connection, you have your gigabit ethernet, HDMI, and Thunderbolt ports. This will start you at $599 as a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, and 16 gigs of unified memory, as well as 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. Now I know what you're thinking. You're looking at that 16 gig memory and that 256 and thinking, oh, that's not enough. As you'll see later in the video, 16 gigabytes is more than enough for what your average you know, bedroom composer or musician is gonna be needing. Um, and it's unified memory as well. It's not the same as you know traditional RAM back then. Unified memory, it's a lot more efficient. Um, you can have apps open, it, the computer can communicate easier and everything just runs more efficiently. As for the 256 gigabytes of storage, uh, that may end up filling up pretty fast. But if we go ahead and look at the rest of the prices, getting 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, everything else is the same, and you're already looking at $799. And if you want to put more RAM on top of that, then you're knocking on the door of $1,000. And the whole point of this video is to be able to find something that has the best value for the dollar. So because of this, um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to recommend the base model Mac mini. And in a minute, I'll show you why that'll be more than enough for music production. Also, depending on how long it's been since the upload of this video, and if you're watching this, they actually have a education savings program going on right now where you can get $100 off of uh, a new Mac computer. And if you bring in an old device, you can even trade it in and you can get trade in value on top of that $100 discount. Um, that promotion ends September 30th. So if you're watching this soon after the upload of this video, you should still have some time to take advantage of that promotion. All right, now that we've quickly reviewed the specs, let's go ahead and talk about the upsides of owning an M4 Mac mini. And for me, number one is just the price. When I bought this M4 Mac Mini, I traded in my old computer, which was a 2019 MacBook Pro, and I also got that college discount, which actually brought me to a grand total of $330. And for what you get with this computer, that is just an insane amount of value that there just simply isn't anything else out there right now, at least brand new, that has more value for your dollar than the M4 Mac Mini. And another great upside is that it's just so compact. You can really put it anywhere on your desk and it doesn't take up a lot of space. It looks nice, it's simple, it's small, it's efficient. Um, that's a great plus if you know you have a lot of stuff on your desk, like I do. <laughs> and the third upside is like I said before, just the insane amount of power that's packed into this little box. We'll see it in a minute, but this thing can handle pretty much anything you can throw at it. Now, the only case where it might be not enough is if you are a professional in your industry, you know, working with hundreds of tracks, several plugins, several buses, you know, routing audio from all sorts of different places. At that point, you might be better off getting more RAM or maybe even looking at a Mac studio. But for your average bedroom musician, this thing is incredibly powerful. And I promise you, you will not need to get anything else other than the base model. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the downsides because there are a couple and the biggest one for me, at least, is the lack of an SD card. It baffles me how in 2025, you know, we still cannot get SD cards on these Macs. I swear, sometimes they bring it in and sometimes they take it away. If you have a MacBook, you probably have it. And that's great. But these still do not come with SD cards and it is very annoying. <laughs> and also, just a lack of ports in general. I mean, you have your HDMI, you have some USB-C's Thunderbolts, and which is great, but that can really eat up 
you know, you can fill up ports right away, depending on how many things, how many instruments, how many different devices you have plugged into it. It just simply may not be enough for what you need. And the second one, um, I don't know if it's a big deal for me, but for me it is. And that is the location of the power button. I don't get why they didn't just put it on top or on the side or anywhere else except on the bottom where you can't even fit your finger. You gotta like lift up the computer and press the button there. It's so incredibly annoying. And yeah, it's just, it's just a really big gripe of mine. Now, thankfully those two downsides can be remedied pretty easily and it actually might help you and you might want to think about getting this anyway. And that is a USB hub. Now for the M4 Mac Mini, the one USB hub I would recommend is from a brand called Satechi. They fix all of the problems that the M4 Mac Mini has, which is very few, like I said, lack of ports and um, the deal with the power button. I actually have um, their Satechi USB external hub and it is great. You get two USB A's, which are both 10 gigabits a second. You have your USB 2.0, the SD card reader, which I love and also this little groove that they cut out where you can have better access to the power button and so that is just a huge huge plus for me now with this hub you can also extend your storage by adding a stick of ssd um, it can fit many different sizes and it's just a great addition to buying this computer you know you can always use more storage especially in this industry now the base model mac mini has 256 gigs of storage uh, that may be enough, but for some of you, it might run out quickly. And so if you're looking at getting a USB hub and adding more storage, I would recommend at least a terabyte or more of storage. And depending on what brand you get, that may run you between $150 to $200, which kind of sucks. But honestly, if you look at the price of the Mac mini and the hub and all that together, it's so cheap. If you trade in a computer, you know, you're not even cracking a thousand dollars yet. And some of these computers out here are just, you know, go for thousands of dollars and it's just insane. So really it's not that big of a deal. If you're buying an M4 Mac mini, get yourself this Atechi hub and some extra storage and that's all you will need. All right, so now that we've got the upsides, downsides, specs, all that good stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and boot up Ableton Live and see what this thing can really do. Right now I have a live 10 session, the default session that opens when you first get the app. And let's see. So for our settings, we're going to start at about 512 samples and work our way down. And we'll just see what, how the computer reacts. Um, we'll see the CPU load. So I'll go ahead and actually do 512 samples to start. We'll work our way down, see how much the computer can take. Uh, running at 48K sample rate. And it looks like our overall latency is about 27 milliseconds. So quite a bit, but I'll just go ahead and play it and just see where we're at. Okay, you know, getting the CPU loaded up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like it's hitting like right under 40% for the CPU load, which is pretty good. And the reason why I started with this session first is because this one uses all of Ableton's in-house um, plugins. So it's not gonna take too much load on the CPU as you can see right here. It's just all Ableton plugins. Now let's go back to the buffer settings and this time we'll do 256 and we'll see where we're at now. So it looked like the CPU load actually went down, which is kind of surprising. I thought it would kind of go up, but okay. I think we can go down all the way to 32, so let's try that. All right, here we at, 32. Let's check this, check this part out right here. Yeah, doing this job, and I'd say it's doing it pretty well. Okay, so now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and we're gonna look at a session that has more external plugins. So here's a little beat I made for fun. Yeah, I know it's a complete mess, don't care. Um, 
So in this one, I have a mix of you know plugins from Ableton, and then I also have some external plugins like on my master channel. You know, I have some um, Isotope plugins running along with some of Ableton's plugins. And this one, we'll, we'll go back, we'll start at about, let's say 256 for the buffer size. So here we are, 256. Okay, so just sitting here, we're already at about 20% CPU load, so we'll just go ahead and play the track. As you can hear, little silly, little whimsical beat. Uh, looks like we cracked about 40%, but never more than 50% CPU load. So that's really good. Drop it down. You know, let's skip 128. We'll go straight to 64. Yeah, yeah no, no problems whatsoever. Let's try 32 and I'll bring it, let's bring it right here. So as we just saw in those two examples, the CPU is an absolute beast. I'm sure it can handle much more than what we're looking at right now. Um, but it's a great start so far. You know, I'm sure I could probably run like three more MIDI instruments and, you know, a bunch more plugins and, you know, the computer will handle it just fine. I have no doubts about it whatsoever. You know, clearly this computer is so capable, but I'm not satisfied. I want to be able to push this computer to its limits, to its breaking point. And I only got two words to say, Pro Tools. Now, if you're not aware, Pro Tools is a beast. It's not beginner friendly. It eats up CPU and RAM like freaking little snacks or so I've heard. So I'm actually going to school to get certified in Pro Tools. And so I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to test out the M4 Mac Mini's true capabilities because of just how notoriously power hungry this DAW is. Right now, the latest version um, requires at least 16 gigs of RAM or more and officially supports Intel i-Series. If you have AMD Ryzen or you have any of the M-Series Macs, then it should work fine. It's just, it's not officially supported, but I'm sure you can try it out for yourself depending on which computer you have. Okay, with that being said, let's get right into this session we have right here. I uh, tried to beef it up a little more, got drum tracks, um, you know, some shakers, guitar, bass, some MIDI. And right now, Pro Tools has their default settings. Um, and let's see, the buffer size is 256 samples. And I actually noticed this as I was looking here earlier. This uses what's called dynamic plugin processing, where the plugins only use CPU resources when processing audio. Now that's actually good in my case because I have a lot of CPU power, but I'm limited with 16 gigs of RAM. And this is on by default. So if you are in a similar situation as I am, you'd be better off just leaving that on. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and play this uh, 256 samples. Um, yeah, let's just... Uh, I'll just play, I'll just play this part right here. So there it is. Um, it's, I hear like a little bit of crackling and artifacts when I hit play and pause, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. Let's check out how much power this thing is using. So if we go ahead and check out Activity Monitor, if you're on Mac really quick, you can just hit Launchpad, type in Activity Monitor, and that'll show you um, what's happening in the background. So right now, Pro Tools is using about 2.08 gigabytes of memory, and 
that's with about 12, 16 tracks, a few plugins, some MIDI running all at the same time. So not bad. As you can see, we are barely even chugging along with the memory. Now for CPU, obviously it's taken up the most because it's the only thing running right now. But if we go ahead and check out CPU load, it looks like we're only at about like 10 to 15 percent so really no problem at all let's go ahead and head back to pro tools and we'll lower the buffer size again 64 samples running <music> Yeah, this, this thing just doesn't even bat an eye. It's just insane. I thought I was going to struggle a little bit with Pro Tools, but, you know, the computer seems to be handling it no problem, just like it did with Ableton Live. All right, 32 samples. Let's go. And you know what? Just out of curiosity, I'm going to go ahead and disable this as well. And now plugins will be running off of memory, and we'll see if we notice anything different. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing what this little thing can do. So I'm actually going to go ahead and keep Pro Tools at 32 samples as well, but I'll probably keep the dynamic plug-in processing there, even though it didn't look like it budged the memory that much. So clearly, this thing can do its job. I mean, I've tried throwing everything at it, and it just seems to be holding on really well. Now for Pro Tools, I imagine you'd probably have to have like a hundred tracks, all each with several plugins, you know, uh, several buses routing before you'll even start running into problems. And that's probably even if you run it at 32 samples as well. So really, really impressive. So much so in fact, that I got kind of frustrated that I couldn't like choke the CPU out. So, you know, in a desperate scurry, I just opened up every single app. I had Pro Tools up, Live, I had Safari with several tabs open, all my Adobe products, everything, Spotify, everything's on, running, and I barely budged it to about 13 gigs of memory, and the CPU barely went above, you know, 20% usage. So this thing is just an absolute beast. I love this computer. Now clearly this thing runs really well. If you're looking at the M4 Mac Mini, I would not hesitate one second to buy it. And other than that, we're done checking out the M4 Mac Mini. If you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. We're on our way to 500 subscribers, so let's get to that checkpoint. And make sure that you hit the notification bell too so that you'll never miss a future video. Thanks for checking in, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.